Now in this episode, we're actually going to have a story that requires two charts to tell. This is the first of those two charts. You see time from 2007 to present. And in this vertical axis, you see the amount of natural gas being produced. And what is important here is this grand total, because as you can see in the United States, the amount of natural gas that is produced now has increased by a factor of 16 relative to what it was in 2007. 16 times more with a number of dry shale production sources that now produce by themselves more than what the entire country produced in 2007, 8, and 9. This Marcellus shale alone, which is at the borders of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio, if you look on the map, that produces much more than what the entire country produced in 2007. And this is a technological disruption that has been enabled by this shale boom. Technologies from drilling to extraction to even the data analytics of detection has increased gas production by an astronomically huge amount to the extent that people in the field in 2007 might never have believed it could get this much. 16 times more gas production. Now the location of each individual shale source is not necessarily that important for our purposes over here. That could be of concern to you if you live in one of these areas because this has caused the local economy in each of these areas to boom quite a bit. But aside from that, the individual wells don't matter that much. The grand total is what we care about for our purposes, even though this is U.S. only. Now when a country as large as the U.S. can increase the production of an important energy source by 16 times, what happens to the import, export, and consumption picture? For that, we go to the next chart. Over here, we can see on the horizontal axis, 1980 to present, and the vertical axis is billions of cubic feet monthly. And from 1980 onwards, we see that the United States was actually a net importer for a very long time. Even though domestic production was increasing well before the previous charts beginning in 2007, the U.S. was still a big net importer as recently as 2009. Now, in 2009, if you saw this chart cut off over here, would you have believed that just 14 years later, this entire situation could be flipped? That the United States would go from importing more than 300 billion monthly cubic feet to now exporting 400 billion monthly cubic feet. So minus 300 billion, to plus 400 billion because of this boom in production that we saw in the previous chart. And the fact that the United States can export this much is even after domestic consumption has risen so much because natural gas is replacing coal in electricity production across the United States by a huge amount. That is why the United States has also been a huge success in terms of reducing our CO2 emissions. No country in the history of the world has reduced CO2 emissions by the extent that the United States has over the last 15 years. In fact, no continent in the history of the world has done what this one country has done to reduce CO2 emissions. That's why the environmental movement is full of a lot of very, very shady characters, because while there are some people who mean well in that movement, they're actually harder to find. The most prominent voices in environmentalism should be happy by this fact that this reduction in CO2 emissions has been so huge and so rapid. Instead, they're not happy about it. They don't even mention it because this happened without them getting their cut. Most of them are seeking graft and nothing more. Also, the last time I checked, the world has one atmosphere. So if the United States is lowering CO2 emissions by an amount even greater than the extent to which other economies are increasing CO2 emissions, the next world CO2 increase is going down and the countries that are net increases of CO2 emissions such as China are ones that environmentalists don't dare to criticize. Instead, they want to extract graft from the country that is in fact rapidly lowering its CO2 emissions at an astonishing rate. Yes, US CO2 emissions were quite high as of 2007, 2008, and 9. But what has happened since then is just absolutely astonishing. And that's a good way to test whether an environmentalist is serious about what they claim to care about versus not. Thanks for watching.